Hello everyone. In this lecture, I'm uh, I'll be discussing about the folic acid metabolism and what are the etiologies for folic acid deficiency. That will complete our discussion on megaloblastic anemia. So folic acid, the chemical name for folic acid is uh, heroin glutamic acid. The chemical name is heroin glutamic acid. Heroin glutamic acid. Because they will have multiple glutamic residues. Okay, we'll come to that. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what are the biochemical reactions that this folic acid is going to take part. There are three important reactions. Out of those three, already two reactions we have already discussed. One is the purine synthesis. The next one is DTMP synthesis. DTMP synthesis. And the third one is methionine synthesis. Methionine synthesis. Among these three, already we have discussed about the DTMP synthesis and methionine synthesis. Okay, so these two, uh, uh, I mean these two reactions, it will also require the vitamin B12. Okay, so this concept we have already discussed in this reaction, how vitamin B12 and folic acid together they take part in this reaction and uh, there will be formation of methionine and also there will be DTMP synthesis that is required for the DNA synthesis. Okay, that is required for DNA synthesis. Okay, so this reaction we have already discussed and also we have discussed about the concept of folate trap. Okay, so I am not going to repeat uh, the same things again. Only uh, thing I uh, want to uh, want you to highlight, uh, I want to highlight in this lecture is the drugs that are inhibiting the enzymes. Okay, so uh, we have discussed that the enzyme dihydrofolate re reductase can be inhibited by methotrexate and trimethoprim and thymidine synthetase can be inhibited by 5-fluorouracil. Why I am uh, emphasizing on these things? Because these are the drugs, they can actually cause folic acid deficiency. Okay, so these drugs by this mechanism, by inhibiting these enzymes, they can cause a type of kind of folic acid deficiency. Okay. Again, I have told you these act as middlemen for one carbon metabolism. Okay, so in one carbon metabolism, they act as middlemen because as I have already told you, they can take up methyl group from a donor and they can provide the methyl group to another compound. In this process, they help in various methylation reactions, especially they take part in these reactions indirectly Okay, by providing this one carbon uh, methyl groups. That is why these are known as the middleman. Okay. Now we'll see how uh, folic acid is absorbed. The first thing is in uh, contrary to the vitamin B12, folic acids, these are usually found in the green leafy vegetables. The source is green leafy vegetables, unlike the non vegetarian foods for vitamin B12. Okay. So, in the food items, this folic acid it will present in polyglutamate form. As you can see here, it is present in polyglutamate form. G means the glutamate. Okay. So, polyglutamate form. And this is actually highly heat sensitive. This folic acid is highly heat sensitive. So, if you fry the food items for 5 to 10 minutes, if you fry the food items for 5 to 10 minutes, it can actually destroy around 85 to 90 percent of the folic acid. It can destroy 85 to 90 percent of the folic acid if you fry it for 5 to 10 minutes. These are highly heat sensitive. After you take up these polyglutamate forms, it will go to the intestine, especially in the jejunum. Again, this is very interesting. We have discussed that iron is predominantly absorbed in the duodenum. We have discussed B12 is predominantly absorbed in the ileum. And the third thing, the third uh, nutrient that is folic acid that we are discussing, it is predominantly absorbed in the jejunum. Okay. So in the jejunum, actually, this we have something known as intestinal conjugates. So these are known as intestinal conjugates. Intestinal conjugates. Okay. Now these intestinal conjugates, they will actually cleave the polyglutamates to monoglutamate forms. So as you can see here, these are all monoglutamate forms. Okay, so polyglutamate forms will be converted to monoglutamate forms with the help of intestinal conjugates. Okay. Now, this monoglutamate form can be absorbed by the jejunal epithelial cells. Okay. So, this will be absorbed by the jejunal epithelial cells. And this absorption is carried out by a channel protein that is known as PCFT. What is this PCFT? This is proton coupled, proton coupled folate transporter. 
This is known as proton coupled folate transporter. Okay, with the help of protons, this monoglutamate forms of the folic acid can be absorbed into the jejunal epithelial cells. In the jejunal epithelial cells, this will be converted to 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. I hope you remember what is 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. So, this is the 5 methyl or N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is the predominant form that you are going to find in the plasma. However, this is not the active form. It has to be converted to tetrahydrofolate with the help of vitamin B12 to become active and to cause uh, the various reactions. Okay. So, this monoglutamate forms will be converted to 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate before it can go into the portal circulation and then to the liver. Okay. So, it will be converted to 5 MTHF form and this form can be absorbed into the portal circulation and it can actually go into the liver. Okay. And from liver, it will go into the into various circulation, into the systemic circulation. And also in the liver, this 5 MTHF can be converted to can be converted to tetrahydrofolic acid for various reactions that we have already discussed with the help of vitamin B12. And also you have to remember uh, liver is the liver is also a storage site for folic acid. Okay, so liver is also a storage site for folic acid. So now we need to remember some numbers. So normal, the usual daily requirement. What is the daily requirement? We need around 100 microgram per day. For vitamin B12, we need only 3 microgram per day. Folic acid, we need 100 microgram per day. The storage amount is around 10 milligram. Storage amount is around 10 milligram. For B12, it was only 3 milligram. And this storage for folic acid, it is sufficient. It is it is sufficient only for three to four months. Three to four months. For B12, we, we discussed that the storage form of vitamin B12 is sufficient for three to four years. But for folic acid, it is only three to four months. Okay, so these are the numbers you have to remember with respect to folic acid. Okay, so now everything is clear. So polyglutamate forms are present in the food. These are heat sensitive. And after it is ingested in the jejunum, this will be converted to monoglutamate forms with the help of intestinal conjugates. Now, this monoglutamate forms will be absorbed into the jejunal epithelial cells with the help of proton coupled folate transporters. Okay, in the epithelial cells, it will be converted to 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. This will be taken up into the liver, and from the liver, it can go into the systemic circulation. Okay, so in the plasma, the predominant form is 5 MTHF form. Also, in the liver, it, it will be utilized for various reactions. So, that is why it has to be converted to tetrahydrofolic acid for uh, with the help of vitamin B12. And also in various other cells, this has to be converted to tetrahydrofolic acid before the reaction can take place. Okay. And daily requirement is around 100 microgram per day. Storage form is 10 milligram and it is sufficient for 3 to 4 months. Okay. This is clear. Now, we will add up some other information here. So, there is a drug, anti-epileptic drug that is known as phenytoin. This can actually inhibit these intestinal conjugates. So, phenytoin, by inhibiting intestinal conjugates, it can cause folic acid deficiency. Okay. And we have also discussed previously that phenytoin can also cause aplastic anemia, especially the idiosyncratic type aplastic anemia. And phenytoin can also cause pure red cell aplasia. It can also cause pure red cell aplasia. And also, we are now discussing that phenytoin can also cause folic acid deficiency. Okay. Then there are certain other, some other drugs and toxins like OC pills and alcohol. OC pills and alcohol. These two can actually inhibit the proton coupled folate transporter. Okay. And in this process, they, they are inhibiting the epithelial cell absorption of the folic acid. Okay. So OC pills and alcohol, they inhibit the absorption of the monoglutamates into the epithelial cells. So OC pills and alcohol can also cause folic acid deficiency. So these are all the drugs that can cause folic acid deficiency. Phenytoin, OCP, alcohols, and we have also discussed methotrexate, trimethoprim, and 5-fluorouracil. So these are all the drugs. By these various mechanisms, they can actually cause folic acid deficiency. Okay. So this is clear. So phenytoin can inhibit the intestinal conjugates. And OCPs and alcohol, they can actually inhibit the PCFT, that is potent coupled folate transporters. Okay. Now, if you understood all these things, if you try to summarize what are the causes of folic acid deficiency, already we have discussed about the drugs. So I'm not going to repeat them again. Now, there are certain malabsorptive conditions which can cause folic acid deficiency, like celiac disease, like celiac disease and tropical sprue, tropical sprue. 
I told you celiac disease will predominantly affect the duodenum, but sometimes it can also affect the jejunum. Okay, so along with iron deficiency anemia, it can also cause folic acid deficiency. And the tropical screw predominantly affects the ileum, but it can also involve the jejunum. Tropical screw actually it involves the distal small intestine, so it can involve both jejunum and ileum. So it can cause both B12 and folic acid deficiency. Okay, decrease intake happen in uh, patients who are malnourished, who have poor diet. Then uh, children, children and infants, children and infants. Then chronic alcoholics, chronic alcoholics, uh, they will have a poor diet and they are also prone to develop folic acid deficiency because of various other mechanisms. One mechanism I have already told you, they will, they will have defective absorption. And also this alcohol will inhibit, also this alcohol is going to inhibit the release of folic acid from the liver. So alcohol has various mechanisms. First of all, it will cause a poor diet that will cause reduced intake and also it will cause it will inhibit the absorption in the intestine it will also inhibit the release of folic acid from the liver into the circulation so folic acid deficiency is very common in chronic alcoholics and also one more vitamin deficiency that is thiamine deficiency that is vitamin b1 deficiency that is also very common in alcoholics okay that we'll discuss later and if uh, if the child is predominantly dependent on goat milk they can also develop this folic acid deficiency because goat milk is a very poor source of folic acid. Okay. Then increased utilization, increased utilization happens uh, in case of pregnancy and lactation, in case of pregnancy. And one more very important point, in pregnant lady, if they have folic acid deficiency, their child is going to develop this neural tube defects. Indeed, it's neural tube defects. Neural tube defect they are going to develop neural tube defects. So that is why 0.4 milligram of folic acid is always recommended for pregnant ladies. Okay. So pregnancy and lactation, they are states where there is increased utilization and this, they can also develop this folic acid deficiency. Similarly, patients with chronic hemolytic anemia, chronic hemolytic anemia, they can also develop, uh, they, they can also utilize more and more folic acid leading to folic acid deficiency and also patients with disseminated malignancies because the rapidly dividing cells will require this folic acid for the DNA synthesis. Okay. So these are all the causes for folic acid deficiencies. We have already discussed about the drugs. Then among the malabsorption conditions like celiac disease, tropical screw, decrease intake, especially the chronic alcoholics. And if the patient is dependent, I mean, if the child is dependent on goat milk, increased utilization found in pregnancy. And very important point to remember, folic acid deficiency in pregnant ladies can lead to neural tube defects in the in the child. Patients with uh, chronic hemolytic anemia and patients with disseminated malignancy, all of them will have increased utilization and leading to folic acid deficiency. Okay. And uh, it is very easy to treat folic acid deficiency because you can just give oral folic acid tablets. That should be sufficient. Okay. So that will end our discussion on megaloblastic anemia.